Have you found your place in the Gospel of Mark chapter number 5? Would you be so kind if you can and you're willing and you're able, would you stand for the reading of the Word of God this morning? I'm just going to read a few verses, give you a thought that the Lord gave me a few weeks ago and it's been rolling in my head. And, but I want you to look with me, if you will, chapter number 5. I'm going to begin my reading in uh, verse 25. The Bible says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. It says, When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. With the help of the Lord and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, this morning I want to preach on this thought. Opposition turned in to opportunity. Opposition turned in to opportunity. Do you pray when I pray, Father? Sure do love you this morning, and Lord, it's good to be in thy house. And Lord, we ask you as the psalmist did, God, would you hear our prayer this morning? And God, would you help us, Lord, to uh, break the bread of life, Lord, the scriptures from thy word that they will not return void. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the good service so far. Thank you for the good singing, the good spirit. And Lord, we pray this morning, ask you, dear God, Lord, would you just feed the sheep of thy pasture? God, lead God and direct us in the way and the path you'd have us to go. And God, I pray, Lord, that it may be one here lost, undone, don't know you. I pray this morning, God, you'd just touch that heart that they could truly see that you truly are the way, the truth, and the life, and no man coming to the Father except by Jesus. And Lord, we love you this morning, and we want you to know that. And God, we need you and we desire you. Lord, we need wisdom and knowledge to break the bread of life. And God, we pray, Lord, you'd help us. Lord, in the next few minutes, Lord, as we try to dissect what you have given us, for we ask it in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. Can I say, uh, upon the turn, return of Jesus from Gandaria, can I say he was met uh, by a man named Jarius. Uh, uh, Jarius, the ruler of the Sayagon, the, uh, uh, the, the supervisor. He supervised the worship there. And, and can I say he came to Jesus and he was seeking help from Jesus. Uh, his daughter lie at death uh, in very bad health. And, and can I say, Jesus so willingly uh, uh, like all times uh, in all places Jesus so, Jesus so willingly uh, was willing to go with Jairus but can I say, uh, you would thought, or I would think that why Jesus was moving and staring, trying to accomplish uh, uh, what Jairus uh, ha had leaned on him, what Jairus had asked him, uh, uh, that Jesus would have been so focused on taking care of the problem that Jairus had there wouldn't be a lot of times, would not be a lot of distractions for nothing else. But can I say when we get in our text, uh, uh, we, we find this. Uh, uh, verse 25 said, uh, 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 listen, a certain woman, a certain individual, a certain person, a certain woman. Can I say, listen, a, a, a woman uh, uh, that was living uh, with opposition within her life. Can I say, uh, from my study, my research, uh, I only find her identified as a woman with the issue of blood. Or in Matthew chapter 9, uh, it says a diseased woman. That's the identity we find uh, of this certain woman uh, uh, because uh, of her opposition her sickness uh, uh, she uh, uh, she was excluded she was banded uh, from the services from the Sayagon right. 
she was separated from her friends her opposition uh, uh, she lived with 12 years her, her opposition uh, uh, listen here caused her to use up all her material values she spent uh, what she had and, 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 and maybe just maybe uh, what she had accumulated uh, on doctors and meds can I say in her opposition, uh, although she had spent everything she had, uh, everything she had accumulated, uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, listen, her opposition was still there. Uh, the pain, it was still there. Uh, uh, the troubles, it was still there. Uh, the worries, it was still there. The Bible says in our text that it just got worse and worse and worse Amen. have you ever been in a position in your life when you're faced with objects and you're faced with uh, uh, things that uh, uh, seems like more you try to fix uh, it just gets worse yes, and worse and worse she was living in brokenness uh, her opposition in her life Opposition, uh, uh, the resistance uh, expressed in a action. Uh, uh, resistance, the refusal or, uh, to accept or comply with something. Opposition. When she had used up everything that she had, then she began to use what she always had to begin with. Before I begin, can I say, listen, in the very beginning, 12 years prior, she had everything she needed. Without the materialism of what she had accumulated. What she accumulated, what she possessed, uh, all her riches, uh, all her materialism could not fix her oppositions in her life. See, she tried to buy what she thought would fix what was wrong can I stop right there and say isn't that a lot like us isn't that a lot like us because of our knowledge and because of our accessories and because what we possess let me go another step maybe because of what we can get or who we know we try to fix all oppositions within our life. Here was a woman, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, when she used up everything that she had uh, uh, materialized, she began to use what she had all along. The Bible says uh, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, look at her oppositions, uh, within her oppositions uh, uh, that she heard. Uh, uh, in verse 27 it says, uh, uh, when she heard of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When she heard of Jesus, uh, uh, can I say when she began to hear, uh, when she began to listen. See, my friend, we hear a whole lot, but we listen to very little. Right. See, we're not paying attention to what we're listening to. Maybe we're not paying attention to what God is trying to tell us. Maybe we're not paying attention to what God is trying to 
do in our life. The, the, the Bible says that when she heard of Jesus, uh, uh, when she heard of Jesus, it was, it was some things that, that left her heart. I believe it left her, uh, le left her thinking. Uh, uh, can I say when she heard of Jesus, uh, she stopped planning. Uh, she stopped researching. Uh, she stopped making appointments. Uh, she stopped asking questions. Good. You could say that just maybe she just got still and begin to listen. Yeah. Yeah. See, when she began to listen, she began to use what she had all along. She was missing her opportunities because she wasn't listening to the right one. Can I say, listen, uh, hey, she began to listen, uh, and when she began to listen, uh, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't know what they said. I don't know what went on. But I do know this. Uh, hey, ever what was said about Jesus affected her. Right. Yeah. Amen. Let me stop and ask the question. When was the last time that you heard something from Jesus that affected you? Yeah. I'm not talking about, hey, uh, jump over and down. I'm not shouting. I'm all for worship. Sure. Yep. But how can you worship right when you don't never listen? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Good. I promised myself I would not chase no rabbit. But I have failed myself before. <laughs> Maybe the mess some of us are in is because we're hearing a whole lot, but we're not listening. Maybe the reason America's in the mess it's in is because they're hearing a whole lot, but they're not listening. Here the Bible says that when she heard that Jesus was in town, uh, I don't know what was said, uh, but whatever is said, it got her attention and it affected her. Can I report to you uh, if it's anything uh, that we need in society and in our churches today, uh, listen to me, it's something that will get our attention uh, other than a little beat, uh, another, other than a little program, uh, something other than a show. Somebody say amen. We need to get in touch and listen to God. We need to listen to God. It affected her. Uh, uh, listen to me, the effects of listening to the things of God. Oh, can I say, uh, I, I believe uh, what she heard, it affected what she thought. What she was listening to affected her. It got her attention so much that it affected her thinking. Right. Hmm. It's okay. I like it. Can I say so? it, it, it changed her thinking and, and she began she began to think uh, uh, you know uh, what I'm listening to is affecting my mind uh, uh, can, I, can I just report to you uh, 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 very quickly uh, she'd run out of all other avenues right, right, yeah, amen how many times you and I uh, have tried to succeed uh, in accomplishing a need or, or desire uh, or something in our life uh, and listen we tried in all our might and all our things uh, but we could not accomplish it. And then we changed our thinking. Somebody told us something. Somebody revealed something to us that had got us thinking down the, uh, the line, uh, uh, the highway that's the right way. Yeah, yeah. And I report to you when she heard, uh, heard of Jesus, uh, uh, she began to listen, she began to pay attention. Uh, it began to affect her in a way. Uh, uh, listen, it changed the way she thought. She said, if I can just... If I can just get to Jesus. If I can just 
get to Jesus. Can I tell you something this morning? That's where we need to get. We need to get to Jesus. What's going, to get to What's going to get you to Jesus? What you're listening to? What are you listening to? Because what you're listening to will affect your mind. And it's going to have to begin in your mind before you're ever going to do anything for any cause for the Lord Jesus Christ. Here she said, if I can just get to Jesus, uh, I, if I can just uh, I, I get uh, uh, where I can get close to Him, uh, uh, can, I, can I just report to you? I believe that she made up her mind. She says, you know something, I need something. Yeah. Yeah. Stop me asking you a question this morning. How many would honestly say, preacher, I need something this morning? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. How many say, preacher, I need something this morning? She says, I, she says, I need something done in my life. Uh, I, I cannot keep a living like this. Uh, I cannot keep a battling this. Uh, uh, this is bothering me. This is troubling me. This, hey, listen to me. This is no fun living like it. She had opposition in her life. And then she began to hear the good news. Uh, she began to hear the one uh, that's willing, uh, uh, the one that's able. Uh, she began to hear something that, uh, that maybe helped her, helped her uh, to the point that, uh, uh, listen to me, it changed her thinking, her thought line. And, and she began to believe within herself, uh, uh, listen, if I can just get to Jesus. Oh, if I could just get to Jesus, if it was some way, uh, oh, that I could just get to Jesus. Uh, honey, listen to this preacher this morning. Uh, honey, we need to get back to the Lord. Uh, we need to get back to the old-fashioned way. Uh, we need to get back to the old path. Uh, oh, can I tell you, we need to listen to the right thing uh, so to change our mind uh, oh, that we can get to Jesus. So we can get to the Lord. She says, I heard about him. I heard about him. I've tried everything else. Are you with me? Say amen. Yeah. amen. I've tried everything else. Yeah. I've wasted everything that I've got. I think I'll just try to get to Jesus. Yeah. I think I'll just try to get... I'll just get to Jesus. <laughs> The very thoughts, uh, 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 look at you, have a changed mind uh, uh, about all the uh, opposition. Uh, can I say her opposition now is turning in uh, to an opportunity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Good. yeah, her opposition in life now uh, uh, doesn't look so bleak. Uh, it doesn't look like it's so dark. Uh, it doesn't look like it's no hope. Uh, it does look like it's a light at the end of the tunnel now. Hey, Things has changed just a little bit. Uh, hey, opposition had me ate up. Uh, hey, opposition had me beat down. Uh, uh, opposition wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do. Uh, oh, but can I tell you when I heard about Jesus? Yeah. Opposition turned into her opportunity. It turned into her opportunity. How did that begin, preacher? Oh, let me tell you, she began to listen with what she already had. Yeah. And she began to use what she already possessed. Yeah. Oh, can I say, uh, it turned into opportunity. Opportunity is no more than circumstances that make it possible to do. Somebody say amen. I, I'm starting to feel something. Amen. Oh, listen to me. Opportunity is no more than circumstances that allow you and me to, uh, to do something. Can I say her opposition did not have her beat up so bad that she was not able to accomplish what she had hurt? Mm. What she's listening to affected her mind. <laughs> you know, she said, you know, if I could just get to him. Yeah. Now let's go back. Let's think. Yeah. She couldn't go to the Sadiagon. She couldn't be around her friends on kind of opposition, her sickness. Say amen. Yeah. 
But see, when she began to hear the real things, uh, when she began to hear the right things about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I don't know what she heard, but I know what she heard affected them. And I believe if we'll deliver what God has given us, that it will affect His people. If they begin to listen to what God, the Holy Spirit, is trying to tell you, that it might affect your mind. Uh, uh, listen to me, then you won't give up. You'll try another avenue. You'll get on a different path. You'll get on a different roadway. Her opposition had beat her up, had beat her down. No, no doubt had brought her difficulties and distress. Oh, but when Jesus showed up. Oh, when the things of God showed up. The one that had the opposition. I don't know where she was at. I, I don't know what was going on. All I know is what God told me in his word. But somebody said something about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he got a hold of her. Not only did she, was she listening, but can I say what she's doing to affect her mind? Uh, uh, but he gave her a sense of direction. She says, I, I need to get to him. I need to get close to him. I need to get through this crowd. She wasn't supposed to be in that crowd. She was not supposed to be around that crowd. That was a forbidden. But can I say what she had listened to had changed her mind so much uh, that opposition... Mm, Opposition wasn't playing a role no more. When she saw opportunity, oh, listen, when opportunity rang, when opportunity became available, she said, I got to do something. I got to do it now. Say amen. She said, I got to do what I got to do now, and I need to get to the one that I'm hearing about, the one that has changed my thought, the one that has changed the way I'm thinking. I just need to get to Jesus. She says, if I could just touch his clothes. <laughs> she said, if I could just get close enough to him, wouldn't you like to have been a fly on the wall? Now, I don't know about you, but that fires me up. Here, here's one that, uh, look here, don't know Jesus Christ. and just hearing about Jesus Christ. And Jesus has begun to work in their heart and their mind. Uh, and listen to me, something is drawing her. Uh, uh, something is leading her to Christ. Uh, uh, listen to me, she, uh, something has affected her so much that she's willing to take a chance. Right. Mm. She's willing to take a chance. She's willing, uh, uh, listen to me, to go through that crowd, to mingle through that crowd. Wouldn't you like to saw that? Wouldn't you like to have a church full of people that just wants to get to God? Uh, I don't make no difference how I get here. Uh, I'll sneak. Mm, say amen. Yeah. amen. Oh, here. Uh, uh, listen to me. She's trying to get to Jesus. Uh, and she said this thought uh, had stuck in my mind. She says, if, if I could just touch his clothes. Can I break it down for you? She says, if I, if I could just, just feel him. If I could just feel him. She says, if I could just feel something about him. She says, I need to get close enough to him that, that I can feel him. Or that I know that everything they told me back where I was listening to is right. I just need to get where I can feel the touch of the one they praise and the one they glorify and the one they're, when they're talking back back there uh, uh, the one has changed my life and changed my heart if I can just get close enough to him uh, that I might be able just to touch him you remember those days do you remember those days but what I, in my travels uh, and the people I meet, can I tell you, hey, so many Christians, uh, uh, can I tell you, you've been in the war so long, uh, your back's been up against the wall, uh, you've been living life with oppositions, uh, you haven't been looking at the opportunities. Uh, uh, can I tell you what you got over? You got over that touch. Uh, oh, when you reached out that day, uh, and you know what, you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you asked Jesus to save you, to set you free, uh, to wash you in that blood. Uh, oh, listen to me, uh, that little feeling you got. Uh, now, I know yours don't affect you like mine affects me but I'm trying to be very good today Go ahead. remember that feeling you know that feeling that you get when the Holy Ghost comes by you and he rubs you now listen to me I'm not talking about your emotions 
Emotions has taken over our Baptist churches. Just get away from your emotions. I'm talking about that sovereign feeling of the Holy Ghost of God when it begins to move on the inside. Uh, and you know without a shadow of a doubt, uh, oh, honey, it's Him. Uh, it's Him. Uh, I know He's near. Uh, I needed Dad. Uh, I needed God to come by me. Uh, I needed God to move in me. I've been in some oppositions this week. Uh, I've been through some things. Uh, and I'm battling some things. Uh, oh, but this is my opportunity. Uh, oh, I come to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, listen to me. He changed my Paul. He changed my mind a little bit. All I need to do is just get to Him. If I can just get to Him and feel His touch just once more. Can I tell you, she wanted to feel Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to do. I want to feel the Lord Jesus Christ. I must feel the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Something about knowing that He's near, that He's there. Here, listen to me. Hey, she's been living her life in opposition. She spent everything she had, but she was listening, and it changed her heart and, and her mind. And, and she said, if I can just touch, if I can just feel Jesus. <laughs> How many here can say, Preacher, I remember when I got saved? Say amen. 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 So you've experienced that touch. When was the last time you felt that touch? When was the last time you felt that feeling that only God can put in you? When was the last time that you felt that? I don't have time today to go through it, but can I say when, when she got to feel him? <laughs> Woo! When she, got, I'm gonna be good. When she felt him, she just touched his clothes. When she touched the rim of his garment. Oh, can in other words, she made contact. Mm. She made contact. Why did she make contact? Uh, uh, she had nowhere else to turn. Uh, uh, she was in a valley. Uh, she had her back up against the wall. Uh, uh, what did she have to lose? Can I stop and say, what have you got to lose this morning? Why don't you make contact with God? What have you got to lose? She made contact. Can I say that that contact from this woman with the issue of the blood, this diseased woman, someone you and I wouldn't want to be around, when she made contact, the Bible says, and you can read the text, i got to move on. Listen to me, at, at, at her issue of blood was gone. Her opposition was gone. Her troubles was gone. Her pain was gone. Are y'all with me? Say amen. Hey, it was gone. Why did it get gone so quickly? Because she got her. She could have got all along. Can I say, 12 years, she battled in opposition. She wouldn't give in. She wouldn't listen to the right one. She didn't have the right mind or the willingness to come. Oh, but when she figured out uh, uh, he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no man coming to the Father except when she figured out what to do. Yes. And she touched the hem of his garment. The Bible says that she was made whole. Made whole. Whoa! Makes me want to shout. Say amen. Oh, listen to me. She was made whole. Do you know what? That's the way it was when you got saved by the grace of God. That's the way it was when you got saved by the grace of God. Oh, listen, all that old life's under the blood. All that old life is gone. Someone say amen. You're a new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because you made contact one day. When you got to listening right. When you got to hearing right. Oh, when you got to thinking right. And then you got to moving right. Oppositions. Can I say, although we made, uh, uh, we, hey, look here, we made contact, we got saved. Can I just stop and report to you? Our opposition is still not gone. Still not gone. If you're out not in any, any today, you're going to be in some tomorrow. You prepare yourself. You put on the whole armor of God. 
But according to the text, God has given us instructions on how we can accomplish our oppositions and turn it into the opportunities that God has laid out before us. Hey, her opportunity came. She says, if I can just get to him, if I can just touch him, if I can feel him. And when she made contact with him, she was made whole. Can I just stop and say this? When she contacted Jesus, it stopped Jesus. Oh. <laughs> you better read the text. Somebody say Amen. That's what you call somebody in need. That's what you call somebody wanting something. That's what you call somebody believing. That's what you call somebody really trusting in what they're going after. Yeah. Good. Hey, in a multitude of people, did not Jesus say in this text, he said, hey, who touched me? Yeah. As the apostles, as you was talking about Jordan this morning, can I say, can't you just see them men dumbfounded? What you talking about, Lord? Yeah. You see all these people? How do I know who touched you? I tell you how Jesus knew somebody touched him. Because somebody there was real. See, let me tell you something. When you, when you make contact with the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, through your feelings, uh, uh, can I tell you, He already knows before we reach for Him uh, if it's real and if it's not real. Uh, oh, can I tell you, it's time uh, uh, that the New Testament church gets real with God. Uh, oh, listen to me, and reach for a feeling that's, uh, uh, that it can move. Uh, you want a revival? If you and I, uh, uh, listen to me, we'll get so close to God and be real about the touch. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, listen. A contact. When was the last time you made contact? Now don't ask me all. Don't ask me all at one time. When's the last time you made contact? Are you much like all of us? We just go through the rituals every day. No need to look at me that way. I'm telling you facts. We do what we need to justify that makes us what right in our own mind. Oh, I prayed this morning. I did my devotions this morning. I'm going to read after a while, but right now, Lord, I've got to go and do this. Come on, talk to me a little bit, church. Can I say when this woman, uh, hey, listen to me, Jesus already knew, to, for, knew her before the foundation of the world. Jesus knew she was on the way. Uh, Jesus knew the way she was uh, coming in. Jesus knew when he was, she was going to touch him. Jesus knew that he was going to stop. He said, the virtue has gone out of me. Right. He said, she touched me with something that moved me. What? Somebody say amen. Yeah. Are you listening? She touched the Lord Jesus Christ with something that moved inside of the Lord. I'd say that's feelings, wouldn't you? I'd say that was a touch, wouldn't you? Hmm. She stopped the Lord. She made contact and she was made complete. Are you with me? Say amen. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember how she came in? Yeah, yeah. She came in the backside. Yeah, yeah. Behind. The Bible says from the press behind. That's what the Word of God said. In other words, from the backside. Yeah. Right. See, it didn't matter to her how she came just as long as she got there. Right. Right. See, can I report to you? You're not here this morning by accident. Right. You're here for a reason. You say, oh, preacher, I come every week. But maybe you came in a different way today. Maybe you came with a heart that's heavy. Maybe you came with a life that's troubled. Maybe you got your back up a wall just a little bit like this woman in opposition. Maybe you're down in a valley this morning and you're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to reach down farther than you can reach up. Oh, can I tell you, I listen, you got to be listening. So you're listening to do something to your head and your mind will do something to your heart that'll make you want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be real about reaching out and getting to feel of Him and knowing He's near and know he's there. Uh, all that listen to me, that it gets the attention from God. That it gets God's attention. Bible says when she made contact, she become complete. She 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 came in, she came in the backside, and, and when Jesus began to ask questions, 
And don't think he's through asking questions. He's not. You may ignore him, but he's not through asking questions. He said, who touched me? And, and amazingly in the Word of God, God's, God's always true. Somebody say amen. Oh, can I just report to you? He looked at directly at her. <laughs> when they could not tell him who touched him, he really already knew. And the Bible says, paraphrasing, uh, uh, can I report to you, uh, uh, this is what it said. The Bible says that when he looked upon her, that she came and she kneeled down before him. And, he told, and she told him who it was and why it was for. And you know what he said? My child. My child. My child. Her name went down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I, listen to me. I'm about done. Opposition, 12 years. Spent everything she had. I don't know what she could borrow. I don't know. I just know she spent all she had with what the Word of God said. Everything. It was gone. She still had what she had at the beginning. But when she began to use what she already had before she had the riches, it changed her life. Why? Because the opposition, I'm going somewhere, the opposition in her life give her the opportunity that she needed. Opposition, her opposition was turned into opportunity. You say, how did it happen? She had nowhere else to turn. She had nothing to turn with. So when she began to use what God had already gifted her with, He had already given her everything she needed. When he, she began to use what He had gifted her with, God began to move. God began to move in her life. My child. See, when she come in that time, she came in the front door. She didn't have to sneak in behind. Because see, all the evidence of all the opposition that she had in her life that kept her out of the Sayagon, kept her out of the temple, kept her out of worship, kept her away from her friends, maybe away from her family. Can I say all her oppositions, God had washed away. Uh, God had made clean. Uh, she had a new life. Uh, she had a new slate. Uh, uh, she could go anywhere she wanted to go. Uh, she could do anything she wanted to do. She could travel with and out of the crowd any way she wanted to. Uh, she, after God, after contact with God, can I say, uh, being made complete, uh, I listen to me she could come in uh, she could come in the door of the sanctuary uh, she could come into Jesus and she could bow before him uh, and she could say it was me uh, I came uh, I had uh, but it's gone somebody say amen, amen. how did this happen to this woman because of opposition in her life now no doubt no doubt, you and I, though we saved, or I hope you're saved this morning, we still deal with opposition in our life. We still need, we still live with needs from God. We still live with the needs of filling Jesus in our life. Many of us this morning are living life. And we're trying to maintain. And we're trying to make, make, make everybody think everything is okay. But can I tell you, listen to me, all of us have some kind of opposition in our life. Amen. Can I report to you? This morning is a morning of opportunities. Amen. This morning you, like this certain woman, you know what you can do? You can come. You can come. You can bow down at an old-fashioned altar and you can try to feel, you can try to touch the Lord Jesus Christ with the opposition that you're dealing with because God can take our opposition and make it an opportunity.
as a pianist comes, everyone stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, this morning, let me ask you a question. Ask you a question. Everyone stand, every head bowed, every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, maybe you're here and you said, Preacher, Preacher, I, I, I'm dealing with some things. Preacher, I got a little opposition in my life. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your workplace. Maybe it's other things. Say, Preacher, pray for me. I, I'm dealing with some things. Is that you? Would you raise your hand? Oh, I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. This morning, why don't you come? As the pianist begins to play this morning, why don't you come? Why don't you give it to the Lord? Why don't you make contact? Why don't you see if you can feel Him this morning? Maybe here this morning you say, Preacher, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Preacher, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. Can I tell you, my friend, the Bible says the day is the day of salvation. Maybe the Lord has come by you and He's nudged you by listening. Maybe He's touched your thoughts, your mind. And maybe you've got that little nudge from the Lord. If that's you, sir, if that's you, ma'am, not come to you, not embarrass you. If that's you, would you say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved. Preacher, I'm, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pastor, you come. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.